figureheads, thanks for tuning in. Uh, as you guys know, we've already sold the ramp truck, but we still have some old footage back from when we had it. So, on this episode, Dan's going to be showing you how he fixed up the rear brakes. Hey Dan, run that intro! Hey Gearheads, thanks for tuning in. Um, so we definitely need to check into these brakes on the rear of the ramp truck. The pedal has been feeling weird lately. I know there's a lot of things with proportioning valves on these things. Um, this also has one of the uh, manual height sensor ABS units, one of the first ABS units. So if you slam on the brakes in the front and the rear of the bed of the pickup truck raises up and the rear end goes down, then it will actually lessen the flow of fluid to the rear wheels so they won't lock up on you. So that's pretty cool. I want to make sure that's working correctly. But uh, the thing that started this was I was going to bleed all the brakes and there's no bleeder on the inside. So I figure with there being no bleeder, I know I'm going to have to replace the wheel cylinders. So I might as well just go ahead and uh, take everything apart and do it. We're going to do it one at a time because I can get this axle out. The other side's up against the house, so I'll have to uh, move the truck around to do that. But for starters, I'm going to jack it up so the wheels are off the ground, get the wheels and tires off, and then I'll jack the truck up over that so we can go ahead and have some access to this and we'll get started. This is going to be more of an entertainment than a tutorial, so I may not put every single little thing on here. So if you're watching this to learn how to do your brakes, you'll get an overview of it. If you're looking to be entertained, well, you might want to go to somebody else's channel for that too. But I'll do a little bit of each, so let's get started. got it. Uh, I got it. You didn't really help. You just watched. So, uh, this is made in Taiwan, so it must be original equipment. Um, so we'll put that to the side. There's the glory I was hoping for. So, uh, it's a good thing I didn't try to pry this off because it does go behind this keeper, which is behind the lug nut, which we're going to take these off first. We're going to get the wheels out of the way, and then we have to take this off and pull this axle out to get the drum off. So, moving on, I'm going to reorganize my tools. Okay, I got some more. One inch? Ah, one inch. It's American. See, that's what I'm saying about these trucks. It's an 84 C30, so you really never know if something is still standard or if it's metric or not really anything in between. But there you go. So, let's uh, see if we've got enough air to get these off. Okay, so this is what I thought. Because this is so long, I was kind of hoping they would uh, be able to come out, even with this lip up here. They're not. So, uh, the rear end is jacked up and on a jack stand, so I'm going to jack up the body of the truck and get that out of the way. Luckily, these tires are pretty new, so I did get away with that. I've seen a lot of these trucks, uh, older trucks sell with tires that need to be replaced. These are in really good shape, so. All right, so I just want to point this out from the back of the truck. So you can see the angle that the rear end is on. Now, the, um, the filler for fluid is in the middle here. So basically what you want to do is make sure that whatever end you're working on is higher than that filler and as long as the angle is going downhill away from you when you pull the axle out you shouldn't have any leakage there. I did put a bucket under here just in case because I'm smart or so I think. Ugh, I can already smell the rear end fluid. Alright so Oh, that stinks. All right, so let me show you what this thing looks like when it comes out. Uh, 
plan did work. And you notice it did drop down on the inside. So when I put this thing in, I'm going to have to make sure that I get it in correctly. So the plan did work that there's no fluid coming out. And this is why I can't do this on the other side of the truck yet, because I don't have enough room in between the house and the truck. So I'll have to move it. But I figure I'll do this side first, because it's easier. So when you pull this out, you just want to check your splines on the end, make sure they look OK. These splines look incredibly small for such a big vehicle, but I'm not a spline orator, so I guess they're OK. Now, unless you're a bodybuilder, definitely want to make sure you have this thing by the horn because it is heavy. Actually, it's not going to come off. i got to do all this stuff. What am I thinking? All right, so there's multiple uh, rings inside here, and there's some tabs. There's some clamps. First thing we're going to do is take off this snap ring. It goes on the outside. So this one has a little keyway at the top. Uh, plate. And next you have the outer lock ring, or lock nut. Um, this, as you can see, the pattern on this one has these six circles on it. Some have four squares or whatever. You can get a special socket that'll go over that, which would make this a lot easier. And I may do that. Depending on your brakes, you may need to uh, loosen up your shoes. Tell them how bad I need these eggs. Ah! Oh, just... I finally was able to free the drum from the shoes um, using a little, uh, a little persuasion. So sometimes leverage counts. Um, the star adjuster is like seized up on this thing. So. I'm very interested to see what lies behind here. These are very heavy, I'm told, and I still have kind of a broken foot um, from the stereo episode. So uh, I'm gonna be careful in getting this off, and then we'll take a good look and see what it looks like. Put it in here, I guess. It's kind of heavy. All right, so we got the drum off. And uh, looking at the situation here, um, it definitely looks pretty dirty. The shoes don't look terrible, but I did find out something pretty interesting that there's a hole in the backing plate. Apparently there's something called an emergency brake that uh, somebody decided to just disconnect. So we're going to reconnect that. We're going to fix it up. Um, this is actually the same style brakes that are normal on pretty much every vehicle I've ever worked on in my life. So I think we're just going to go ahead and uh, we went this far. Might as well just put new shoes on it and uh, all new hardware and get it for both sides. And then we know we're done. So I'm going to take us all apart and see where we're at. All right, I got everything off of the truck. I got it laid out here so I can kind of go through it, clean it up and prep it to go back on. This brake drum is the biggest, heaviest brake drum I've ever had to deal with in my life. This thing is humongous. So it's actually the drum and the hub together, and uh, the studs go through there. So we're going to go ahead and clean up these holes where the axle bolts go in. I already cleaned up the axle bolts. I'm going to clean up the outside of this a little bit. Then I'll go ahead and clean up the outside. And then I'm going to take the bearings out and repack them, and I got a new seal for it. And then we'll go ahead and move on to... Um, the star adjuster and all the springs and everything are going to be replaced, so I don't care about those. Uh, certain things we do have to reuse, the uh, equalizer bar for the emergency brake, and the nut, we have to make sure that's in good shape, so we'll get to all that. The axle, we have to clean that up, and um, the wheel cylinders are going to get replaced as well. So I'm going to go ahead and clean up what I need to, and then we'll take a look at some of the old parts versus the new parts. Chasing threads is always a good idea when you have something apart just to make sure it's going to go back together correctly and easily. You can also torque things the correct way. And you see all this gunk that's coming out of here? This is why we chase threads, because we want all this stuff to not be in the hole. We want it to be out of there. And then test fit the bolts. Make sure that they're going to go in without a problem and you can get them torqued down correctly. This feels nice. All right, so there, if you look right under the number two, you can see how that dips down and goes back up. This thing is wavy as anything. 
way it goes across. So we're going to have to have these cut. And to get it cut, I'm going to have to pull this hub off. So I'm going to have to knock out all of these studs from the other side. I'll show you how I'm going to do that. So in order to get the hub separated from the drum, we have to knock out these studs. Uh, we're just going to put a lug nut on the end and we're going to hit it with a BFH. It'll pop right out. It has splines and as long as they don't get damaged, we can reuse them. We'll just have to put a spacer on here and tighten up the lug and that'll tighten up the stud. We'll get it flattened out and we know we're good to go. Once I get this off, I'll also be able to look at the uh, seals and hopefully uh, repack the bearings. Now for this hub, like I said, I'm not going to be replacing the bearings because I believe they're in good shape, but they are loose. I think this just got way too hot and all the grease that was in it kind of melted or boiled out of it. So um, I did get a new seal for this, for the inside of it. So we're going to pull the seal out. We're going to pull the outer bearing out. And then there's a snap ring for the inner bearing. We'll pull that out. I'm going to go ahead and grease up both bearings. We'll put them back in the hub. We'll put the new seal on it. We'll clean this up. And I actually have the drum back already from the uh, machine shop. And they cut it. They had to do about 60 thousandths, which he said was normal. Um, so we'll go ahead and get this hub set. We'll put the studs back in. And we'll get the operation ready to go back on the truck. There it goes. So we'll go ahead and pull this outer bearing out. This oil seal is a little different than normal. Um, usually they're open on one end and closed on the other end. This is closed on both ends. But if you look um, in here, you can see that this is open on this side here and it's closed on the other side here. So the open side is what's gonna go towards the bearing. And I went ahead and put a little greaser on the outside of that. And what we want to do is we want to use a press or something flat that we can make sure it's level and we're just going to hammer it on home. The hub is all prepped. I got a rag in here to try and protect the bearings and all that grease I just put in there from getting any dirt in them. And we did get the drum back and I did clean it up a little bit. Um, you can see how beautiful that looks and uh, how much of the shavings are in there now on that grease. So uh, I should probably wipe that down a little bit. Um, I haven't even looked at this since I got it. I actually went to a local machine shop at a Napa Auto Parts. Um, those are all over in the U.S. here um, for my Canadian friends. Um, I did try calling a closer store. And they just had like regular car brake lathes, so they were not able to turn this. But that one actually had a machine shop in it. Um, and they cut this for me in like two hours and cost 40 bucks. So not too bad when you consider a brand new one of these drums is over 100. And uh, they turned it on pretty quickly. It was worth it. So we're going to go ahead and lift this up. It's a lot lighter now. And we're going to put it back on here. And we're going to go ahead and press the studs in from up here. Now that it's cleaned up, we're going to go ahead and take our studs, which I did soak for a little bit. I cleaned them up and then I also uh, put the lug nut up and down these threads just to clean it up. I didn't have a tap this big. Die. Tap. Tap a hole. Die threads. I didn't have a die that big, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to get these started in here. Now these can be pressed in. They have to be pressed in. They can be pressed in with a press or... They can be pressed in with a press, or you can just hammer them in with a uh, drift pin, a hammer, whatever. Just make sure everything is centered. Or, I'll actually show you another way after I get some of these started, which I may or may not use, but there's another way to get these seated. I think I mentioned it before. So, if this goes easy enough, I won't do it that way. But you definitely want to make sure this is seated down all the way. And uh, we'll try... We'll try just hitting them with a hammer first and see how that works. You want to watch? I'll see what kind of throw I can get here. All right. And you can hear that last hit, how it changed. That's what we like to hear. That's when you know it's bottomed out. So with this being pretty easy, I think I'm just going to hit them all in this way. There you go. Here's another way that I mentioned before that you can go ahead and get these lugs seated. So we can start just by putting the lug nut on. 
and bringing that down. And then what we do is we can tighten it up. And as it tightens up here, it will pull it through. So let's try getting started here a little bit. Okay, and you see it came up a little bit. And then as we get higher, we can put these spacers on and we want to use the flat side of the nut. And we'll go ahead and get it going. My exact measuring device here. All right, that's pretty much it. There you go. So there's a couple of different ways to get studs in. You can hammer them in, you can press them in, you can use a drift pin, you can use a press if you have one, or you can use the lug nut and pull it through method um, using some spacers. You don't need to use more than one lug nut because they'll thread on and you're going to end up messing up your thread. So you have to make sure whatever spacers you use, I use obviously other nuts, but make sure they're way bigger than you need it to be so it's not going to bind anything up. If you have um, a big socket, you can use a socket that'll fit over there as well. Or if you have some piping, um, this is from a shock so it won't fit, but if you have a piece of pipe that's uh, the right size, you can use that as well. So, now, where are we at? All right, so now I'm gonna clean the top of this and then this is ready to go back on the truck, but I need to put the shoes and the springs and all that fun stuff on that everybody loves. So I'm gonna go ahead and prep this. I do wanna look at the shoes and compare them and show you a couple of things on that first. So here's the old shoe that came off. You can see it's not down to the wire, but this is a riveted one. You can see the rivet right there. So with this being riveted, you definitely don't wanna go into the rivets, but you can see that this is starting to break down and who knows how long these things have been on there. So it's, you know, good idea when you're getting into brakes to just replace everything that you need to and you know you have it done right. So I'm gonna take my gloves off because this is all nasty and greasy. And these are the new shoes. So a couple things I wanna show you about these. So they are actually two different thicknesses. So let me zoom in here. So you, could, you can see here, this one is a lot thicker and has more material. This one is thinner and has less material. So there is two different shoes and the way to tell which is which is by lining them up side by side. So with the other end lined up, you can see here the metal is lined up and is the same, but this shoe, the material is longer. So this is also the thicker one. So the thicker shoe with more material goes towards the back, the bigger one towards the back if your wheel cylinder is at the top of your operation. Here we're looking at the old wheel cylinder and the new wheel cylinder. The old one's on the left and I think you can obviously see the reason why we had to replace it. Um, it probably was uh, leaking a little bit too. It doesn't look too wet, but with the bleeder snapped off, there's no way to bleed it and uh, we probably had a lot of air trapped in these rear lines. So the new one on the right, has this nice handy dandy little bleeder here. So I'm gonna go ahead and take those bolts out. We'll soak them a little bit, clean them up, and we'll get this back on the backing plate and we'll rebuild from there. And this just fits right in there. And the two bolts will go in the back. Back here. So there's two bolts that go in here. I of course did chase these inside. You can see we're gravity bleeding right now, which I don't really want to do. But now that I move that, it's going to go in here. And we'll get that started. Started by hand is a beautiful thing. We're going to put a tiny bit of Never Seize just on the ends of these. Keep them movable because these will move around once they're in there. Same thing on the other side. All right, there's uh, six points around here. These flat spots here that basically the shoes ride against. So I always like to put a little bit of Never Seize lubricant on these pads. That'll help it to not make noise and not stick later. Now, as you see, 
there's a hole here. That's for the emergency brake cable to come in and somebody has gotten rid of the entire system. So let me go ahead and get the new brake cable I got and we'll push that in to start. So this is the cable. It's got these little tangs that as soon as it pushes through the hole, these tangs will open up and then this side will go ahead and get attached to the shoe. So we're gonna feed this through and it should push right in. Unlock it nice and easy. There we go. So now that's locked in and this will go on the shoe. All right, so we're prepped to go with the shoes. I have the, all the new hardware and everything like that. I also have the assembly manual, um, the book here. This is just a Haynes book you can buy anywhere. It shows you exactly how everything goes on. It gives you all the numbers. You can see all the springs are different uh, sizes. They have different ends. They also are different colors. So if you took pictures before you started, then you shouldn't need this, but it's a lot easier to just have this sitting there while you're putting it together. Now I'm going to film the whole thing, but you're probably not going to see it because it's not really that exciting unless I get any bloopers. So I'll see you when I'm done. Once you get your brake drum on, you want to go ahead and put your brake adjustment tool in the back slot here. And you want to adjust it up. So as you adjust it up, you can see it's clicking there. And what that's going to do is that's going to start spreading it here. Now, here's a tip. If you skip forward to this because you can't get your drum off, you can go down with the wheel, but you notice you have this stopper, which if you can't get to it on the inside, what you're going to have to do is stick something in from the other side, like a screwdriver, and push it out of the way, and then you can go ahead and adjust the wheel down, which will go ahead and compress your brake shoes so you can get the drum off. So if you have to do that, it's really hard to see from the backside, obviously, if you have the drum on, but this is what you need to do. So if you can look into that slot from the back and you can see this wheel, if you can get it set up to turn, you just put a little pressure on it and then stick a screwdriver in here in the other hole, or if you only have one hole, you gotta stick them both in the same one. But all you have to do is release this from touching the wheel here. And then once you have the drum on, like I said, you can go ahead and uh, just clock it down and that will bring these out. You want to rotate the drum and get that set correctly. This really heavy drum on and I'm going to try to get it on here in one shot and get it through the bearings without damaging anything. Alright, so now we got to get this lock nut on, and you notice it is not hex, which you wouldn't be able to get a uh, socket in there anyway, but I did rent the kit, so I have the socket that will fit right on that, so we'll go ahead and just get this started in here. And we'll go ahead and get the socket on, and trust me, this makes things a lot easier when you can borrow a loaner tool. That's a specialty tool. You don't want to spend $22 on a socket you're going to use once or twice. Then this makes things a lot easier. So we'll go ahead and tighten this up. And then the book says to torque it to 50 foot-pounds to seat the bearings into the race. And then back it off until it's loose. Then tighten it hand tight. And then tighten it one further so you can get the keyway in. So that's tight. We'll go ahead and torque it. I'll do it in two steps. I'll do 25 and then I'll do 50. Actually, it looks like the keyway will go right in. So I think we're good there. I want to tighten it too much. Put the keyway in. And then uh, we'll go ahead and get this lock nut on. Uh, the lock washer on. Make sure that's where it needs to be. That's up against the keyway. That's going to hold the keyway in. Now I'm just rotating this back and forth slightly. Uh, to where it's not grabbing 
and I'm tightening up the shoes till I'm going to feel a slight grab and then we'll go ahead and be able to at least get them bled and then once I start driving again we'll go ahead and do the uh, backup self-adjusting trick and they should be good from there. Alright so we got this all set and uh, I just took a little break to have Ashley dye my beard so um, kind of funny when you do something like that in the middle of a video but eh, it is what it is this is real life. So we got the axle now and we're just going to slide this back in very gently. We want to make sure that it's not scoring any of the bearings. And the hardest part is going to be when it's almost all the way in and it has to get locked into the carrier. Now, if you don't have one of these gaskets, um, you can just put RTV on here, sealant. I've seen people do that. I just got to get it lined up here. And that's to the rear. So. Just rotate it around so the splines will catch. There it goes. And then we'll just rotate the drum around. Line that up. And there we go. my best NASCAR impression. Time. Oh, one loose. You lose a second for that. These bolts have to be torqued to 115 foot-pounds, so I'm going to do it like anything else. I'm going to kind of go in an X pattern, and I'll probably do 25, then 50, then 75, then 100, then 115. Just because. Alright, we got 88 on the torque on the lug nuts, so we're going to go ahead and knock them all down to 40, and then we'll go to 88. Alright, so the last thing we have to do on the outside of this, for this side, is to go ahead and pop the center cap on. Now, I do still have to bleed the brakes, of course, and I have that emergency brake cable system that I need to fix up, but I'm still waiting on some parts on that, so I'm going to go ahead and tear down the other side. Unless I have any trouble or I make any bloopers I need to show you, you're not going to see that. So other than bleeding the brakes and getting the emergency brake cable done, this one's done. So thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Oh, I have an idea. Gum. What if you start to What if you start, or what if you start to All right, guys. So I finally was able to get it freed from the pads. No. Shoes. Shirt on because it looks cooler. <laughs> For the torque specs in here, if you know what I'm talking about. Cool, look at my beard, it looks cool. Thanks, Ash.